Dear colleagues from Croatia, my name is Tiago Reis. I am a nephrointensivist from Brazil. I wish I was there in person, but I, I need to work here. My boss would kill me if uh, I was present there. I will share my screen now. My topic is plasmapheresis in the intensive care unit. These are my conflicts of interest. They will not influence my talk. And uh, first thing is we have two modalities of plasma freezes or plasma exchange, which are based on a membrane plasma freezes or a centrifuge. Depending on the country, the percentage of uh, age therapy varies. For example, in France, it's 90% centrifuge, whereas in Japan, they only perform membrane. And I will stress the topic on membrane plasma freezes. The principle is convection. Um, so when you apply a pressure inside the blood compartment of the hollow fiber by the mechanisms of convection or solvent drag, you remove the solute. So this uh, depicts that concept. So imagine you have molecules of water and the proteins in the other solids in the blood. When you apply pressure, you remove those substances depending on their molecular weight and radius. The removal compounds in plasma phoresis uh, are things up to the size of platelets. For example, this is not a, the blood compartment of the person, it's not the capillary, but the blood compartment of the capillary hollow fiber. So imagine if the blood is coming from left to the right, with plasma phrases using the membrane, the plasma future, we remove immunoglobulins, we remove uh, albumin, and also clotting factor, factors, which is undesirable, but the method is uh, unselective. Here in the left is the scan electron microscopy of different membranes. And when you compare a high flux future membrane from for hemodialysis with the plasma future, it's clear that there is a huge difference in pore size of these membranes. Um, putting into context, for example, with high uh, flux futures, we can remove molecules up to 12 kilodaltons. When we go to middle cutoff futures, up to 50 kilodaltons. Uh, with plasma future, we go more than 900 kilodaltons. These are the factors that we usually want to remove. For example, Adams 13, autoantibodies, uh, lipoproteins, and, and others. So um, with plasma freezes, we can remove IgG antibodies. They have 150 kilodaltons of molecular weight. The pentama of IgM has 900 kilodaltons, and here in the bottom, we are depicting the size of molecules removed. So as I've mentioned before, with plasmapheresis, we can remove up to uh, the, the size of um, the cell components of the blood. This is the extracorporeal circuit. Imagine blood coming from left to right. Blood goes into the circuit, gets citrate, passes through the blood pump, goes into the plasma future, then warmer bubble trap. This is the replacement. I have represented here albumin. You can also replace the plasma with a fresh frozen plasma. So this is in the machine. Imagine if the blood is coming from left to right, passes through the blood pump, goes down up in the plasma future, and then gets to the bubble trap where the replacement solution is also placed. Indications. Well, we have renal indications, but usually are indications related to autoimmune disease or antibody-mediated diseases, such as Guillain-Barré, uh, myasthenia gravis, or any other uh, autoimmune condition mediated by antibodies. Um, so this is, of course, is a joke, but uh, we usually exchange 1.5 volumia of the patient. Why so? This table is on Dalgidra's book. It's because if you exchange 0.5 volemia, you remove 39% of the antibodies. If you replace one volemia, you remove 63%.
if you remove 1.5, you remove 78% of antibodies. And if you go further, for example, two volumes, you have an increment on, of only 88%. So you are spending more, 33% more, and your gain is, 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 is tiny. So we only exchange 1.5 volumes in each session. Depending on the molecule, there is a different distribution of the total pool of this molecule in the intravascular compartment uh, versus the interstitial compartment. So for example, IgG, 45% of it is intravascular and 55% interstitial, whereas IgM, 80% is intravascular. This makes a difference because the rebound effect for IgG is higher because there is a, hu uh, a higher percentage of the total pool in the interstitial. So when we apply plasmapheresis, we remove antibodies for the intravascular compartment represented here in the bottom part of this image. But then we have the rebound effect, which is more pronounced for, for example, with I the IgG than for IgM. This picture depicts, depicts the in the x-axis, we have days after treatment commencement. And then the y-axis, we have the percentage of removal of those molecules. So when we start plasmapheresis here, we have a removal of around 80%, around exchanging 1.5 polymia. And then we have the rebound effect, for example, for IgG is higher than for IgM. We wait usually 48 hours to repeat the therapy because we want to remove more molecules. So again, leaving the space, if we, we wait 48 hours, then we have a higher uh, amount of those molecules in the blood due to the rebound effect. And we then apply the therapy to remove more of that compound. It's important uh, when applying membrane pl plasma phrases to respect a maximum TMP of transmembrane pressure of 70 millimeters of mercury to avoid fiber rupture. So in this image here, we represent that. We started the therapy here at 1 p.m. You can see the red line depicts the inlet pressure from your circuit. So you are expirating blood. So the pressure is always negative here around 60 millimeters of mercury. The blue line represents the outlet pressure, always positive. You are pushing blood back to the patient. And the green light here, line here is the TMP, which was below 70, in this case, probably around 20 millimeters of mercury. And in this case, we had the problem in the therapy that we could not identify in which we have an increment in transmembrane pressure, but we were able to finalize the treatment before uh, uh, fiber rupture. I encourage the use of citrate as uh, anticoagulant, regional citrate anticoagulation for the circuit because with plasmapheresis we remove a significant amount of uh, uh, clotting factors and then you the patient is more prone to have bleeding. Well, uh, this was a publication for our group and here we explain how to calculate the citrate flow based on three variables. So the blood flow, the citrate concentration you want in the treated blood, and uh, the citrate concentration in the solution you are using. I usually use 4% sodium citrate, but it's also possible to perform therapy using ACD. And uh, here is also how to calculate the amount of calcium compensation, because we need to compensate calcium Otherwise, because of the albumin that you were giving back to the patient has free sites for calcium, the ionized concentration of calcium reduces in the patient when you replace albumin or uh, other clotting factors because in, for example, flash frozen plasma or a cryoprecipitate, there is citrate there. So the calcium must be replaced during the therapy. Importantly, the citrate also chelates magnesium and also the albumin has free sites for magnesium binding. So it's also important to replace uh, magnesium. And when we, um, 
when we manufacture the bag, we manufacture a one liter uh, bag with albumin 4%, we add 2.5 ml of um, magnesium sulfate 10% in each bag so that we avoid the development of hypomagnesemia. In a nutshell, this is how we do the therapy, citrate concentration, three ml per liter, calcium compensation, three ml per liter of effluent generated, blood flow 150, calcium gluconate replacement 27 ml per hour, citrate flow 200 ml per hour, and replacement flow 2000 ml per hour. So usually for a 70 kilogram patient, we to replace 1.5 volumia, the amount of plasma required is uh, five liters. And if you divide five liters for with the rate of 200 ml per hour, then the therapy takes uh, two hours and, and 30 minutes. This is just comparing the difference between a plasma filter here in the left and the CRT filter. These are the fibers of the plasma filter. Complications of this method are related to the removal of uh, the uh, clotting factors, and we follow that measuring daily fibrinogen. And fibrinogen takes up to 48 to 96 hours to return to baseline. Um, so, for example, uh, we measure it daily, as I mentioned, this is a case in which the patient started TPE with 225 uh, the uh, milligrams per deciliter of fibrinogen, and then after the first therapy, it went down to 81. So we paused, gave the patient cryoprecipitate, and then after two days, it was still uh, below 200. So in this case here, we performed the session and straight away we replaced cryoprecipitate. It's also possible to replace uh, fibrinogen with hemocompletum. Other complications concern uh, hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia, hypothermia, that's why we use the warmer or and anaphylaxis. So if the patient is on ACE inhibitors, you should withdraw uh, 24 hours prior to starting the therapy. Uh, we suggest giving the drugs the patient is taking after the sessions. And if you place the catheter, usually wait 24 hours to start the therapy if possible to avoid complications, bleeding complications in the catheter site. Uh, there's also an indication for high volume plasmapheresis for patients with acute liver failure as artificial liver support is a great one recommendation. This comes for a trial where they compared standard of care versus high volume plasma phrases, 12 liters of fresh frozen plasma replacement. We don't do that in clinical practice. And with this strategy, patients that are transplanted, they don't get benefit, but patients that do not get their liver, they have an improvement survival. So when the patient comes, since you don't know if this patient will transplant or not, in theory, this would be the therapy applied, uh, the therapy of choice for artificial liver support. Interesting is always it's also possible to apply plasma phrases in parallel with CRT. So I'm depicting this in, with this image. We place a Y line in both lines of catheter so that we can drive 150 mLs, for example, per minute for the CRT circuit and 100 mLs per minute for the TPE circuit simultaneously so that you don't need an additional um, catheter and so that you don't need to stop CRT to carry uh, out TPE. So this is the, the image and a simulation here. So we have this Y connector all in the inlet and the outlet line, arterial and venous line of the catheter and both therapies are being applied simultaneously. So I uh, appreciate your attention and I hope to be there in person uh, soon. Thank you.